So I got a gift card for Christmas and didn't really have anything else that I wanted at the time. It was burning a hole in my pocket. So uh, I've been wanting one of these for quite a while and for one specific use. So if you don't know what this is, it is a uh, electricity usage meter. So I'm gonna demonstrate kind of what it does and then explain what I'm gonna use and it for. Basically, you plug it into a wall or into an outlet or an extension cord or whatever. Um, and then you've got several buttons here. So when you press this first button, actually, let me just plug it in. So my outlet here is sideways, um, but when you plug this in, it'll initialize. And then pressing this first button, it shows you the voltage. So at this outlet, I've got 123.1 volts, uh, fluctuates a little bit. Uh, the second button is amperage. So once you plug something in here that's powered on, uh, it'll show you how many amps it is pulling. Uh, the third button is how many watts that device is consuming. Uh, your fourth button will show you the hertz. Um, and so here in the United States, we our AC electricity operates on 60 hertz. So you can see I'm right there. And then this last button, this purple button, is will show you kilowatt hour. So basically how many kilowatts it uses over an hour. And so right now you can see there's nothing plugged in. So it's obviously there's nothing consuming. Um, if you press this again, it will actually, as soon as you plug it in, it starts timing how long it's been plugged in. And so you can see if had it plugged in for one minute, I think it probably just defaults to that because it doesn't show a second's hand. Um, but I'm gonna jump back over here to amp setting. And then I've got just an LED light mounted under the cabinet up here. And so I'm gonna plug this in, see if I can plug it in without blocking the view. Of course it blocks it. So I've got it on amp setting. And so this LED light is using 0.15 amps and we'll push the watt button. 19.2 watts and I would have to leave it plugged in for probably about an hour. It may calculate, you know, after a certain amount of time that it's plugged in, but this pulls so few watts, um, 19 to be exact. So that is in a kilowatt, oops, um, less than it will register on the scale. So, um, unplug that. And so let me show you why I wanted to get this. So over here, I've got, this is my vintage hot point refrigerator. Um, I don't know the exact age on this. Um, I suspect it's either late forties or early fifties. Um, I've removed this panel down here on the bottom, looked for any tags and looked at the compressor and I can't find any stampings or markings on anything. Um, at least that's visible assembled. Um, so I don't know exactly how old this is. Uh, my dad purchased this when I was a kid. Uh, obviously bought it used, um, repainted it at the time. And this actually sat on my grandma's back porch for years and years and years, functioning as the same beer and soda and extra storage fridge. So it's been in operation almost continuously other than there's probably five or six years that it was unplugged on my grandma's back porch. But um, since I was a kid, it's basically ran continuously and never had any issues. But it is your classic old school refrigerator. Um, it's a manual defrost. So as you get ice build up here, it's got a, you got to unplug it and let it defrost. Uh, but this is basically just a, a beer and soda fridge. But I'm really curious to know how much electricity this thing uses compared to a modern refrigerator. So that's really what I'm going to be testing out is this old fridge, how much uh, electricity it uses. Okay, so I've got this extension cord uh, plugged into the wall. Uh, just so I wouldn't have to move the fridge out to actually be able to see the readings. Um, and the reason for that is this thing has volatile memory. So as soon as you unplug it from the wall, anything that it had stored as far as um, values that it had collected will be erased. So I've got it plugged into the extension cord, the fridge plugged in. Um, so it is not currently running and the door's closed. So not drawing any amperage, not drawing any wattage and kilowatt hours and I've been on for a minute. So I'm just gonna open the door, the light should come on. And you can see now it's 0.34 amps. And where's my watt button? So 42 watts, that's probably a 40 watt light bulb. Oh, and there the compressor just kicked on. So with the compressor on, we're 153 watts. And so we'll let it run for a couple days and see how it's doing. 
All right, guys, so it's been about seven days and I've had my refrigerator here running um, and tracking power usage uh, with my kilowatt. And so as far as usage, this doesn't get opened and closed as much as a, a typical fridge in a kitchen does. Um, I know for sure it gets open at least once a day, uh, sometimes multiple times a day. Um, but let's take a look to see what our readings are. You can see we're sitting at 2.24 kilowatt hours. And if we cycle through, uh, it's been 166 hours. Um, we'll record those numbers and calculate uh, based on current electricity rates where I live, how much it costs to run this refrigerator per day. All right, so we're in my kitchen. Um, this is a Frigidaire gallery, um, two doors open like this. Uh, it's manufactured in 2011. Um, the plug-in is behind the fridge, so I need to roll it out uh, for a low profile plug. I'm gonna use one of these power strips, plug this into the power strip, and then plug the fridge into this. Instead of using the power strip, I decided to just come and plug this in directly to the wall and then plug the refrigerator deck directly into that, uh, just so I don't have an extra thing laying on the counter. All right guys, so it's been almost seven days. Uh, I've got 163 hours on the uh, Frigidaire fridge, uh, bottom freezer. So let's take a look and see what we're at. So hit the purple button, 8.61 kilowatt hours. So almost four times the usage of the fridge downstairs. So let's go crunch some numbers and we'll see what this thing costs to operate per day. I just set up a little spreadsheet here. Uh, you can see I've got all my numbers plugged in for my vintage hot point fridge down in the basement. And then um, I've just got some formulas uh, just doing the calculations for me. So for my hot point, uh, we had 2.24 kilowatt hours over 166 hours. Um, so 6.9 days, almost seven days. Um, average kilowatt hour per day usage was 0.3239. And my local rate is 10.81 uh, cents per kilowatt hour. Uh, if you don't know your local rate, um, you can either look at your electricity bill uh, usually it's listed on there. Sometimes they use like some billing codes or something. Um, otherwise there's websites where you can search by your area. So I'm in Missouri. Um, the average in Missouri is 10.97 cents per kilowatt hour. You can search by uh, city or your electric provider and get a, a more um, definitive value for your cost. Um, so for my vintage fridge, uh, total cost over the roughly seven days was 24 cents. Um, comes out to about three and a half cents per day to run that fridge and dollar five per month. So now let's plug in some numbers for the 2011 uh, Frigidaire. We were at 8.61 kilowatt hours, um, 163 hours of operation. And so roughly the same number of days. You can see average per day, uh, almost four times as much, same rate, um, cost 93 cents total to operate it over the seven days. About 13.7 cents per day at $4.11 per month to operate. So what does this all mean? Uh, nothing really, because this was an apples to oranges comparison. So my fridge downstairs uh, has a certain capacity. You can only fit so much stuff in there. It's physically smaller than my fridge upstairs. Um, the fridge upstairs has a full freezer unit in it. Um, the fridge upstairs also gets opened a lot more, um, probably 10 to 15 times per day. And with my kids, they have a habit of opening the fridge, grabbing the milk jug, walking over to the cabinet, and then leaving the fridge open the whole time. So the, uh, the fridge in the kitchen definitely gets ran a lot more. Um, the one thing that I was really curious about was the freezer in the kitchen fridge has an auto defrost circuitry in it. So there's actually a heating element um, that will melt ice off of it. So after a certain number of um, compressor runtime, this heating element actually kicks on. And I haven't pulled my fridge out to see if I could find any specs on that heating element, but I guess it's probably 500 watt or more. Um, so if that kicks on for, you know, even a few minutes or a few seconds, that's, that's a considerable um, spike in electricity usage. I just thought it was an interesting um, kind of project video and just to see the difference. I don't know, just thought I'd share with you guys. Uh, interesting experiment. And if you have any questions or comments, I'd love to hear them down below. And until next time, we'll see you later.